Welcome to the Brook Trout Homestead. Today we're gonna to talk about heat in the garden. Hey guys, so I wanted to make this video because I've been having some issues and some family members have been having some issues. And so I felt like why not just talk about it on here to see if I can maybe help you guys with the weather. Um, here in Texas, it gets hot. Right now we are in June and it is hotter than hot. It's very humid and it's not fun to be outside. So I'm gonna let you guys take a look around the garden. Right here we have our cucumber plant. This year, we planted an Armenian cucumber. Actually, there's an abundance because they were not germinating. Because of the cold weather, um, we were unable to plant our cucumbers when they're usually supposed to be planted, that weird winter freeze. A lot of our plants got pushed. So usually I would be full of cucumbers right now, but I haven't even gotten one yet. But the plant is healthy. How is my cucumber plant healthy? Well, last year we planted pickling cucumbers and another variety in which I don't remember. The first problem we did, it did not have enough sun. We planted it in a more shady area. Cucumbers need sun. Second problem, when they get sun, they need water. They need a lot of water. Cucumbers are water. They need that. So we weren't watering as well as we are now because last year we had a situation with not having a pressure pump on our rainwater system. So this year is much better. What we did was we I planted a bunch of seeds in this barrel. I mulched it really well and so we are watering early morning. The reason why we're watering early morning is because it gets so hot so fast. 10 o'clock we're already up in the 80s. It's seriously insane. So what happens when we water during those times, the water evaporates or it can even sit on the leaves and then your leaves get all burnt to a crisp and yellow and then you're like, why does my plant look like this? And it's because you're watering when it's too hot. It's just not gonna work. It's gonna burn just like if you were to go to the beach and you're wet when you get out of the ocean and the sun hits you for a while, you have a sunburn same thing with your plants even if your plants are full sun even the full sun plants can barely tolerate texas heat and that strong sun so if you look up there we have a catalpa tree it's right over our cucumbers and because we have that there they also get a little bit of shade not much but just enough to where they aren't burning Here we have our tomato plants. Um, what I forgot to mention about the cucumbers, I mentioned Armenian cucumbers because the regular cucumbers are not holding up to this heat. Um, not as well as the Armenian cucumbers are supposed to. So we planted the Armenian because they're better with the humid, hot climates. Uh, so we're excited to get that harvest. Now our tomato plants. Our tomato plants are tiny. I have never seen such small but heavy producing tomato plants like these tomato plants. <laughs> it's insane, but I'm thankful and a lot of prayer has gone into this garden. Now, why do they look so scrawny? First off, our stake system is not good. <laughs> our plan was to have some wood, a nice wood cages done. To be honest, the price of lumber is way too high right now and we just didn't have the time. So what I ended up having was bamboo sticks. They worked for what I needed. I went to Dollar Tree and I also bought some little wire twisties for plants. Works just as fine, but as you can see, they don't hold up really well, but they're holding up. Another thing I like to do is I like to prune the suckers of the tomato plants and I prune a lot of the leaves too. I don't prune them all, but I prune just enough to where my plants get airflow. Cause that's another problem during the humid, hot climate. 
If you have too much, sometimes airflow can be a problem and you'll get things like rot and mildew. Um, I know people who do not prune their tomato plants as heavily as I do, and I know some that don't prune them at all. That's okay, whatever works for you. But for me, I'm not taking any chances, and I we haven't been good with tomatoes at all, ever, unless it was cherry tomatoes. So this year, we're playing around with some really strong varieties, and varieties made for this heat climate. Like I said, this year, I'm really heavily looking at varieties that can withstand this Texas sun. Um, I will probably go ahead and have my husband write it on the below of what these tomatoes are. I already forgot, <laughs> but there it is if you need that variety. It's amazing producing and they get big. They're very similar to Roma tomatoes. Right here is a variety of squash that I've been extremely excited about. I have literally watched so many videos. I've done so much research on the tromboncino squash, and it's also called zucchetta squash, trombone squash. It is just, it's pretty much a zucchini's cousin. It can grow vertically. It can grow fall, uh, on the ground. But what it does, it produces squash that can be up to three feet like this or they can even be curled if they're on the floor um the reason why i planted this one is because it's hardy in the heat and it can be used as a summer squash or a winter squash oh and it is supposed to not have vine borers vine borers apparently will not do the stem like they do the zucchini and the yellow squash so i wanted to go ahead and try that now as you can see, it is June. And this, honestly, I, I'm thankful for this, but this could be much bigger than what it is. I should already have squash, but due to the weird Texas weather, that cold snap, and then that extreme heat, I've had to plant this squash probably three times. No lie. <laughs> so just a little tidbit for this. If your plant was planted in March or any any time before now and it won't it's not growing past like two three inches and it's really yellow or like it's just stunted and brown just rip it out rip it out work the soil maybe put a little bit of fertilizer water it well and replant whatever it is replant your squash plants there's still a chance if you're in Texas or in a zone that's longer there's still a chance. Replant it. And most of the problems that we have with the squash and the melon just starting out, not enough water. Make sure you are watering your plants in the morning or even if you're getting full sun and it's super hot, in the early morning and even in the evening may be your best bet with keeping your plants happy and growing. Mulch, if you do not have a mulch, go ahead and put a mulch down. Something that's organic, don't go to the store and buy a bad toxic dyed mulch. Some of them are okay, some of them are not. I wouldn't take that chance. Get some leaves, get some old plants, get your own compost going, um, talk to an arborist, get some mulch down and keep your soil protected. You want worms. You want all of the good stuff in the soil for your plants. Okay, we're here with some of my overwintered pepper plants. Um, as you can see, the leaves are looking a little wilted. So the main issue with wilted leaves on pepper plants, especially during this heat, is there's not enough water. You would think, hey, they're peppers. They can totally withstand not enough water. Yeah, but no. <laughs> Here in Texas, even your plants that don't usually need too much water need water. Um, and once again, like I was talking about the mulch, pepper plants, even to fertilize, you can use just old plants, old leaves, um, grass clippings, something really light that will just do the job for them, uh, just to protect the dirt because they need some type of water to just sit for a little bit, not don't drown them, 
but they need enough to where your leaves aren't looking like this. Another tip that your pepper plants need water, they're dropping flowers. When your plants are dropping flowers, um, something's wrong. And sometimes it's not even just the lack of pollination. It's they don't have enough strength to produce. Um, our pepper plants have been doing pretty well so far, especially the ones that are overwintered. But like I said, that heat has been so strong that we have to stay on top of watering. And sometimes that's just it. Sometimes we over fertilize when it's just a simple issue like watering. So just look out for those things. Look out for the flowers dropping, the leaves being wilted, and just try the water. Another great tip to keeping things kind of in order, not really scolding from the sun, mammoth sunflowers. I don't know if you've seen it when we talked about the pepper plants, but I had two mammoth sunflowers in that bed. A lot of these plants take full sun, but in some climates, full sun is just too hot, it's too much. And just even just one or two leaves shading off, just a little bit of a plant can do a huge difference on how your plant produces and preventing them from being so hot and crispy. <laughs> Right here, I have a tomato plant and it is sprawling out everywhere. It's indeterminate. Indeterminate is when they kind of just branch off and do their thing. And determinate are the more bush types. I didn't intentionally plant an indeterminate tomato plant here. It came back from last year, um, but it's doing pretty well. What it's, it's climbing the trellis and it's also climbing my sunflower. So, not only is my sunflower acting as a little bit of shade and relief for my plants, but it's acting as a trellis for my tomato. So let's talk a little bit about flowers. I believe your garden should have flowers. If you want to attract pollinators to your garden, to some of your plants that need that pollination like squash and melon, you need flowers. If you're in a place like Texas, like we are, um, I highly recommend doing a lot of drought tolerant native plants, wildflowers, um, because you don't really have to pay much attention to them. We don't water too often. I do also have zinnias. I do water those, but like the echinacea, I know I said that wrong, but you know what I'm talking about. The coneflower, we actually use these a lot for teas and for our rabbits, um, but the pollinators love them and I don't do anything. They just take in the rain and then they hold the water and they do what they do. I have some other wildflowers in our native garden. I know you've seen that already. It's my favorite part of the garden. Um, I have a lot of Coreopsis, um, coneflowers, and just, the Indian blankets, a lot of things that can take hold of the, the dirt and not have to worry about me. Um, they kind of thrive on their own and the pollinators love them. Bring in plants that you don't have to do much work. Huge recommendation on the flowers. Right now, let's talk about strawberries. I had a friend ask me, do strawberries grow well in Texas? Well, I don't really know about anyone else, but they are thriving for us right now. It's getting a lot hotter, so they're getting a lot smaller, and a lot of that has to do with how much we're watering and where they're planted. I know a lot of people right now who their strawberry plants are completely done for the season, but ours have still been going. Although they're smaller, they're still going. And I, a lot of that has to do with the fence right here and a lot of the bigger plants around the area. They're shading them a little bit, but still giving them the sun that they need and we are keeping up with the water. Um, this week we haven't watered too much, so hence the smaller fruit, but they're still delicious. What we have on the side of me and on that side of me are my elderberry. I have been so excited about my elderberry this year. They're triple the size of what they were last year. They've even flowered. 
So one thing you have to know about bringing something like an elderberry plant that is usually grown by a creek, by water, by damp soil, you know, just not where we are right now, is they need water. <laughs> they need it. There's no going around that. I have had to continuously remind myself of this. When you take on plants that are exciting, like elderberry, make sure you research and really try to make the environment perfect for them. Just like we were to do watermelon or cantaloupe, they're plants that need water. So make sure you are watering. Um, this is our second year and we did get flowers, but although we got flowers, doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get an abundance of berries. It takes a lot of work for your plants to push out the fruit, even when they flower. So just make sure you're keeping up with the climate, the, the research, the watering, the sun, the weather, all those things to make sure that your plant is gonna produce what you need it to produce. Also with elderberry, you need at least two or three plants, um, two of separate varieties to have them pollinate and set fruit. So make sure you get that possible too. That's also an issue we have. I recently planted another one um, right by you. But as you can see, it's tiny. I just planted it uh, in the beginning of the season. Um, so I wasn't expecting a ton of berries because that's tiny and it doesn't have flowers itself and it's not doing the pollination. But next year, I will have a video on our elderberry and I will show you the success of it pollinating with another variety. You need that research guys, research. <laughs> so I hope I helped you guys out a little bit with the heat here. Crispy leaves, go ahead and cut them off your plant. Um, there's no coming back from that. Um, if it's extremely yellow and it just looks like it is not, nothing is gonna happen. Even if it has a flower on it, I would go ahead, pull it and plant again. Things like squash and melons, they should be fairly quick in growing. So if it's been sitting for a month and it's really not doing anything, start over. And I highly suggest starting with the dirt. Make sure it's moist, make sure it um, has enough sand to where the water's going through. It has life, some type of bugs and worms and add some castings, add some fertilizer. Make sure your plant is gonna be happy once it starts because your seed has just enough to for the plant to break through, but eventually it's going to need to grab from your soil. So I hope you guys learned something. God bless you guys. Love you. I'll keep up with the updates. And please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate it. We're almost at 500. So see y'all next time.